be able to laugh at yourself a little bit. And sometimes that's hard to do when you're an adult. One of, one of the uh, things that I learned in Thailand was to laugh. I'm always laughing at the most unexpected times. But uh, a good sense of humor is always a great blessing when you're endeavoring to learn a new people. Praise God. Praise God. Let me give you another bit of wisdom. One of the most important things you can do is learn to set goals for your life. I know that there are times when you set goals that maybe the goal was unreasonable and you have not reached it. But nevertheless, there is great value in setting goals. Goals for attendance, goals for soul winning, goals to reach in progress in the work of the Lord, in progress of your own life. I personally set goals all the time. I set a goal for each day. When I get up in the morning, I set a goal of accomplishments for that day. Many, many times I don't get it done, but it does give me a target to shoot at and something to work at, and it motivates me for, to keep me from wasting time. And that's so important that we don't just fiddle our time away in things that are not priorities and things that are not according to the will of God. But we can set a goal for a week and a year and for five years and even for a decade and for a lifetime. You may not reach the goal, or you may go be way beyond the goal, but you will find out that setting goals can be a great advantage to you. And in conclusion, let me mention some of the soul-winning methods that we can use in order to fulfill the will of God in our life. Praise the Lord. There are so many things that we can do. One of the most important things is that daily witnessing giving emphasis to what one has seen and heard is far better than preaching. If you're sitting on an airplane or on a bus or some public transportation and someone is a, a captive audience sitting beside you, instead of preaching to them, it's so much better if you would say to them, could I tell you something that really is wonderful that happened to me? And then proceed to tell them about some great miracle that you have seen. Someone healed by the power of God. Someone blessed by the power of God. And if they are interested in any further conversation, they will respond to that and open the door to you. And it won't be very long until you can talk to them about the new birth and what it means to be born again. Another great way that is being used in recent years is by our musicians and singers and having concerts that will draw people into your assembly that otherwise would never come. If you just get them through your door and give you a chance to be friendly and kind and warm to them, by all means, if you get them there, treat them right. Because the impression that you make upon them in your foyer is the impression that they're going to remember. And if you've got a bunch of members that stands around and gawks at them like somebody from Mars has just walked in without extending a hand or a warm welcome, they sure won't want to come back there. Someone says, well, they're shy. Get over your shyness. Use a little bit of discipline. Walk up to someone and say, hello, how are you? So we're so glad to have you here. And so one of the most important ways to get people there is through a musical. Why not have a spaghetti dinner at cost? You know, you can, you can feed a person spaghetti for about $2 and give them the trimmings. You can give them a salad and a, and a roll and a little bit of uh, garlic bread and uh, maybe a little piece of cake that's donated and, uh, and sell it for a dollar or $2 and fill your building up uh, with uh, people that comes for a cheap spaghetti dinner. And then every 10 minutes or every 15 or 20 minutes, put on a 10-minute program of your music upstairs and encourage and encourage those that have come, come upstairs just, just for 10 minutes and take them into your sanctuary and let them hear a choir song or a trio song or some of your music, just 10 minutes. Don't keep them there for an hour, but keep them there 10 minutes. Who knows? They may come back and be filled with the Holy Ghost. If you're in foreign countries, sometimes language classes. There are people that will pay you 
in some countries. Twenty, twenty-five dollars an hour to teach them the language. At the same time, you can teach them the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. This would be good for you that want to be aimers to go into a country. There's countries that will pay you that much money just to teach English. You can make a hundred dollars in four hours and the rest of the day is yours to, to preach the gospel and to do the work of the Lord. God is able to use that very effectively. Home Bible studies is one of the most apostolic things that you can possibly do. In Charleston, we use the one-hour, one-time Bible study for conversion. This past week, Sister Cole told me that they had two brand new people receive Bible studies and both of them were baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost in their home and that they were in church this Sunday. Praise the Lord. It is an effective way to reach them. And then, of course, you need to follow up with the longer Bible studies, 10 Bible studies, 20 Bible studies, however many it takes to establish them in the church. But being in their home makes a difference. When you go into someone's home, things that otherwise would not convict them. You don't have to point out on the wall and say, this is of the devil and this is not right. Just you walking into their homes will condemn those things to them that otherwise would not be condemned to them. But when a righteous person comes into their home, they start seeing everything in their house in a different light. And the next time you come, it probably won't be there. So a visit to their home helps to clean up their environment, both uh, physically, sometimes the places are just stinking rotten dirty and they need to clean up. And your coming will cause them to clean up a little bit. And other times it is sinful and it will cause them to clean up. The care ministry or the cell ministry or the home churches is a great outreach. The crusades, having great crusades. But if you're going to have a crusade, don't swallow the cat and choke on the tail, as Brother Tom Fred Tenney loves to say. I've heard him say that all my life, and I love it. But sometimes people will go to the trouble of engaging one of the most powerful evangelists in the world and then absolutely, totally frustrate him by not going to the extent of getting people there for him to work with. We need to get serious when you're going to have a crusade. Get serious about it. Get somebody there for him to work with. Spend some money. Spend some time. Don't just go through routines, but get serious. And then there's the campus ministry. You can win foreign students and get you a missionary free that'll go home and become a missionary that we don't have to support. Praise God. Literature is an vital thing. House to house visitation, correspondence courses, open air meetings, street meetings, and all of these things. Skits and dramas is an excellent thing that we're beginning to learn to be very, very valuable. It's had, it's had a, a hard time coming to us, we Pentecostals, because I can remember, I can remember when I was a kid when they preached against dramas. It was a sin to have a drama even about Abraham or Isaac. <laughs> but thank God we've learned that even these can become tools and uh, puppets and all of these things. And then, of course, uh, follow-up is so important even to other cities and reaching nearby cities. I sincerely hope that this course is going to change your life and help you. It is a joy to come to you in this fashion.